Ah, oh, damn. That, that's all right. We'll, we'll we'll get the next one. You know, it's all good. Just we're only going to get one wrong this week. Unlucky there. Oh, my God. Just kick the goal. You idiot. I just don't even know what to. That's it. Oh, I'm done. I quit. What's going on, guys? It's Bergs back at it again for another week of tips and predictions here on The Casual Athlete. This week, we're hitting double digits. We're into round 10. And as you can tell by my intro, round nine wasn't very spectacular for everyone. And I think we can all agree on that, that there were some teams out there that just should have gotten the win and should have given us an extra point for our tips this week. I tell you, tipping has been a struggle all year. But let's Quickly, before we get into the video, a reminder to like and subscribe to the channel. We bring out so much content each and every week just for you guys, whether it be tipping, fantasy, or general NRL. If you want to see any more videos from us, guys, please let us know down in the comments. But let's have a look back at how I did last week. As we can see, guys, I took Penrith in that first game, 13+, plus, and why not? I, I think Penrith have been... Uh, a standard at this point in time. Cleary wasn't going to be available for this game, but that did not matter for me. A couple of injuries came for the Rabbitohs in this one. It was a tough one towards the end. Dean Hawkins going down with an injury. Jack Whiten stepped into the halves, and I think that may be the solution going forward with Cody Walker and Jack Whiten in the halves. Manly out at Brookvale didn't get a win on Friday night. I'm absolutely shocked that it was a Jamal Fogarty-less Raiders team. Elliot Whitehead, like every captain should, led from the front and played one of the best games I think I've ever seen him play, especially coming back from injury. It was outstanding from the Raiders to come back in that game and what an awesome finish to that game for Raiders fans. And no doubt they were talking about it to their mates all weekend. I changed my tip on the Roosters-Broncos game here. I went the Broncos earlier in the week, but I wanted to go the Roosters, but I thought they'd make it close. But in the end, it blew out to a 40-18 to 18 scoreline. And the Broncos, yeah, they're going to be missing a few blokes moving forward, but we'll get to that in a moment's time. But good to see that the Roosters got the win there. The Dogs, 1-12, to 12, yep, they were down at half time. But the thing with the Dogs at the moment, this is a resilient Bulldogs team that we're seeing this year. They are not the Bulldogs of old. Their defense is still quite stout. They held the Tigers to only 14 points and managed to come back and win this game. They have enough strike on the park to do so, and they got the win there, 1-12. to The Storm as well, getting the win, 1-12. to It was dicey towards the end. I was kind of watching this game from the sidelines. I was at a wedding on the weekend, so I was kind of checking the score updates, and when it got to 20-all, I was a bit nervous, to tell you the truth, and the Tiger, the Titans... Uh, no doubt have been in that position a lot this year in a lot of close games, but so have the Storm and they've managed to come away with the win more often than not, and they did so again this year. Maybe it was a controversial call, maybe not, um, but we'll get to that in uh, some other videos or maybe some other content later. If you'd like to hear more about it, let us know. For my Cowboys, I just, I'm at a loss for words as to describe how bad we were in that game. Um... I can't think of a time where I have felt less confident about our defence. And, you know, in 2021, we were dead set awful um, with our defence. And it's almost like it's returned to that at this point in time. Um, and we're staring down the barrel again of not making the finals um, on the back of a fourth straight loss. So that, for me, is personally, I guess, a bit jarring. But I think I'll talk about the Cowboys when they come up this week. Warriors, again, disappointing as well. Just like the Cowboys, they've lost a bit of mojo at this point in time. Kind of like Austin Powers, I've lost me mojo. Um, with the Warriors, they're just not stringing enough points together. Uh, they're really struggling in the red zone. I'm just thinking that if Adam Fanua Blake doesn't barge over and score, then they actually can't get across the strike at this point in time. And the Knights held firm. There was um, some good defense from them as well. And that's their second win on the trot without Callum Ponga, so good on them. Uh, and I don't know why I tipped the Dragons. A bit silly. I think the wet weather was um, the good equaliser there at Shark Park. It often separates the men from the boys. Yeah, it was close, and it was always going to be a bit of a sloppy game uh, at uh, Shark Park, which looked like it was, uh, you know, Warragamba Dam at one point. So, 
yeah, didn't get the win there, but no doubt we'll move on to more positive things next week. On the lighter side of things, here's the update from the tipping comp that we are running with NRL.com this year, and Benny Backshots has now taken a two-point lead up the top there, but Callan has moved into second there with Axel coming into third place, both on 50 points with some decent margin there. There's a few people on 50 points there. So, guys, keep putting in your tips each and every week. We go all through Origin. We go all through the finals right up until the grand final this year. So it's going to be a mad dash to the finish. I am absolutely struggling. So hopefully we can make the comeback of the century. And now let's get into round 10 tips. We have the Dolphins taking on the Seagulls on Thursday for our first game in round 10. And the only matchup between these two teams was last year where the Seagulls ran away with it, winning 58 points to 18. And I've got to say the Dolphins are, despite their outs, still looking quite strong in terms of the hustle. They're competing for each other. They're um, finding ways to score points. I think Nick Arima is a little bit underrated at the moment. Guys like Jermaine Asako are having a good game here or there. And um, they, they did have a few injuries on the weekend. I think Tessie New went down with an ankle injury. We also have, I believe, Kenny Bromwich may be coming back for this game. The Hammer might still be a couple of weeks away, but... Um, Herbie Farnworth as well is looking um, good in the rehab centre and could be back for this game. The Seagulls, I've got to tell you, one of the most disappointing um, teams of last week. They were up 24 points to six in that game against the Raiders. And, geez, did they or did they not blow that? Um, I just can't tell you how disappointing it was from uh, not only Tipper's perspective, just because you expect Manly to win that game, but just as a Manly fan, you'd be absolutely shocked as to what you're seeing because you're expecting Manly to be this top eight team this year. And right now they're copping losses like that. Uh, it's just not what you need from a team that no doubt disappointed last year and by not making the top eight, but also have shown this year that they can compete with some of the best in the, in the league. And they're becoming one of those teams that you can't trust every week. So this makes it super difficult. It's also at Suncorp Stadium. Surely Manly bounce back in this game and get the win over the Dolphins, but I just think the Dolphins are looking extremely strong right now, regardless of their injuries. And I don't think you can take into account their injuries because it's not it's it's not making any difference to the outcome of their games. But I am going to go Manly in this one, but I think it'll be close. 1-12. to 12. Our first Friday night game of round 10 is the Dogs taking on the Panthers out at Blue Bet Stadium in Penrith. And over the last 10 games between these two teams, the Panthers have the better record, winning eight out of those last 10 games. The Dogs have also not beaten Penrith since 2019. For the Dogs, Connor Tracy didn't start last week's game, although he had a quad injury, so... I think maybe the dogs were just being a bit precautionary there. It did cost them a little bit in terms of punch, I thought, at the back. I'm not sure. Um, Blake Taft's been playing there for most of the year, but uh, I do think Connor Tracy is the better option. And Nathan Cleary also sat out last week's game as a precautionary issue. Did all the training and everything during the week, but just as a five-day turnaround, um, they didn't feel they needed to play him against the Rabbitohs, and the result showed that as well. They didn't need to play him out there. Um for this game, the Dogs are in some good form. It's become a very interesting fixture for me, um, whether the Dogs can break that six-game losing streak against Penrith. But what I like for Penrith is that Cleary will be coming back. Uh, it's out at Penrith as well. They just find a way to win games as well, kind of similar to Melbourne. They're um, digging in hard. The next man up strategy seems to be working a lot. Um and they're just getting the job done. For the Dogs, what I like about them at the moment is their defense is extremely stout. They really hang in games and don't give it to you easy, especially over uh, the course of this year. Any games that they have lost have not been by much. So I do expect Penrith to mare up and get the win here. Um, there's a lot of animosity. I get, not animosity, but there'll be a lot of fire in this game of the guys who left Penrith wanting to prove to Penrith that um, they either shouldn't have let him go or shouldn't have given him the chance to walk away. Uh, and they'll be wanting to get a win for their new club. Guys like Stephen Crichton, Matt Burton, Viliami Kikau, just to name a few. So I'm actually going to go the Panthers in this game, but I think it'll be close. 1-12. to 12. 
Our second Friday night game is the Parramatta Eels taking on the Broncos at Combank Stadium. Now, over the last 10 games between these two teams, the Eels have the better record, winning six out of those last 10 games, although the Broncos have won the last two games between these two teams. Uh, big injury news during the week for the Broncos or during the weekend. Um, Adam Reynolds out for six months and Jock Madden is now tasked with the big responsibility of taking over this team. Um, they just fell apart against the Roosters. They just couldn't get anything moving um, in the last 20 minutes of the game and no doubt a couple of injuries came to play there for them as well. Jesse Arthur's also out for another six weeks as well with an injury. So that is going to hurt the back rotation there as well. Um, for the Eels, they had a week off, but they also have some injury problems in Clint Gutherson being out for about four to five weeks after having clean up knee surgery. So you'd expect that Blaze Talungi will get the shot to go into the fullback role. If it's anyone else other than Blaze Talungi, I will be stunned to see who it is. Um, and no doubt Ethan Sanders will also maintain his position in the halves after impressing in his debut game. Uh, for this matchup between these two teams, it's a bit difficult. Both the walking wounded right now. I think the Broncos um, should have performed a bit better at home on the weekend against the Roosters. But with their injuries, you can understand why they didn't. And for Parramatta, they've just got um, not a lot has gone their way, you could probably say, this year. Uh, whether it be lack of effort, a bit of attitude, they look gassed at points during games especially in the second half of that Dolphins game. But then they rallied against Manly and almost came away with a win until something stupid from Sevo happened as well. And they will be without him as well this week after getting suspended. So, yeah, tough one. But I actually think that the Broncos, despite not having Adam Reynolds, will go down to Combank Stadium and get a win here. I think Gutherson is the emotional leader out there and the captaincy will have to fall to a less experienced player. Um, and... No doubt if Blaze Talungi is going to be playing at the back in his uh, first game at fullback for the Parramatta Eels, he is going to get terrorised all night. But it won't be by Adam Reynolds. So I expect it to be a bit closer than people think. I'm going to go the Broncos, 1-12. Our first game on Saturday for round 10 is the Tigers taking on the Knights at Scully Park in Tamworth. Now, over the last 10 games between these two teams, the Knights have the better record, winning six out of those last 10 games. They are also on a four-game winning streak against the Tigers. Now, at Scully Park, the Tigers have only won one out of the four games that they've played there. However, I feel like at the moment, the Tigers are playing some better football, even without Api Corusau on the weekend. They showed that they could still compete with the Dogs, who are in some pretty decent form right now and do have a very strong defense. But the big improvement for the Tigers has been their defense. They really haven't let uh, teams run rough shot over them. And the Knights have been getting away with some, you know, <laughs> pretty ugly wins over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I think guys like Dane Gagai are stepping up in recent weeks and they know that uh, if someone doesn't get it done, then no one will because Pong is not there. Um, and they generally push all of their attack through him. So um, there there are several guys stepping up. Tyson Gamble's looked better in recent weeks. Jackson Hastings has stepped up in the halves. Jacob Saifiti is leading well from the front. And, yeah, the wins have been ugly, but it's what counts, the two points. So they're sitting in 11th spot right now. But I just feel like the Tigers, they've lost a couple in a row now. They're a bit better than that this year. I feel like they've been building slowly to another win. And the Tigers will also be my Hills Cricket Academy lock of the week. So no doubt Nick from the Hills Cricket Academy will be happy about this one. Nick and Demo, they're both massive West Tigers fans. I'm going to go the Tigers in this one, 13 plus. The next game on Saturday is the Dragons taking on the Rabbitohs at Netstrata Jubilee Stadium in Cogra. And over the last 10 games between these two teams, the Rabbitohs have the better record, winning seven out of those last 10 games. However, the last eight games have gone to the home team in this fixture. Um, big out again for the Rabbitohs this week is that Cameron Murray will be spending about six to eight weeks on the sideline uh, with an injury, and that is tough again for Rabbitohs, not only because they lost their coach, because their season's in the toilet right now, but he is also the captain and leader of their 
club. Uh, they do get a few massive ins, though, for this game. They should get Alex Johnston back for this game. They will get Latrell back from the suspension, and no doubt he will be looking to fire up against the Dragons this week, and he has to do uh, a lot better. He's got a lot of making up to do for his um, stint on the sideline. They also lost their halfback, Dean Hawkins, last week, and as we know, Lachlan Ilias is out right now with a broken leg. So the halves, I expect it to be Jack White and, and Cody Walker. I've been calling for it for a couple of weeks just because they are two of the most experienced guys in the locker room that they have there. And no doubt they played the same position. They both played six, but one of them is going to have to step into that game management role and play seven this week. I don't care who it is, um, but they're going to have to live with that. And I think that opens them up to be playing a bit more um, free-flowing footy, throw everything at the Dragons. You've got nothing to lose at this point, the Rabbitohs, so I think they may as well throw Jack Whiten in there. The Dragons also get a couple of guys back this week. Moses Suley should be back, and also Luciano Leilua should be available for selection as well. Um very puzzled as to who to tip in this game. I do feel like the Rabbitohs are going to come good at some point. I just think that they're due for a win, the Rabbitohs, at the moment. And while St. George aren't playing the best footy um, over the last couple of weeks, I still don't necessarily think that they are in any way, shape, or form to stomp the Rabbitohs. So... I'm actually going to tip the Rabbitohs this week, guys. It's a bit of a dicey upset, but I think with the inclusion of Luttrell and Alex Johnston that they get that left-hand side attack moving and Jack Whiten um, in the halves will actually prove to be uh, a bit of a better option than what Dean Hawkins has been running. Yes, the kicking game I expect to be not great at all. And I expect to be a very high scoring game between these two teams because the Rabbitohs cannot fix their defense whatsoever. But I'm going to go the Rabbitohs, 1-12. to The last game on Super Saturday should be an absolute belter down at Amy Park where the Storm will be taking on the Sharks. Now, over the last 10 games between these two teams, the Storm have the better record, winning seven out of those last 10 games. And big injuries uh, for last week's game from uh, the Storm side of things. Pappenhausen, again, I feel so bad for the guy. He has just not had an injury-free season in a long time and... Um, has re-injured that ankle that he hurt last year again. Um, little fracture above the plate. So wishing him again a speedy recovery because he was looking phenomenal in that first half last week. Set two tries up and scored one. So no doubt the Storm um, will be upset about him. And the other thing as well, his potential replacement also got injured in the game. I mean, Sua Fialongo, um, with a bit of a knee injury, who also looked electric, scored a great try, um, turning Philip Sammy inside out. So, yeah, bit of um, bad luck on the injury side of things, but they got the two points, and um, that's what counted for them. And for the Sharks, well, they're in first place right now, and they're just slowly ticking over. You know, there's nothing really too spectacular about them. I think that um, they're playing uh, the kind of football that we've expected from the Sharks for a couple of years now, which is just that consistent winning football. Um, You know, you know what you need to do each and every week. Each player knows their role really well. And some of those guys are really getting recognized. It's a good matchup. I go to I will be tuning into this game and watching it very closely. Um, Meany will be moving back to fullback, which you'd probably have to say disrupts Melbourne a little bit. I think with Pappenhausen, they've been slowly finding their groove a little bit more. Pappenhausen's been um, working his way into the season, but the last couple of weeks has been playing really well, really backing up, hitting holes, and then also setting tries up for other people. So. Yeah, it's tough to lose him, and I think the Sharks will sniff a chance that they can grab a bit of an upset here. No doubt they'll be the outsiders as well, and that always adds fuel to the fire. It's tough for me, but I need to see the Sharks win against a genuine top eight side for me to tip them against another top eight side. So I'm tentatively going to go the Storm in this one, 1-12, to but... Sharks, prove it to me, and I'll be on your side for the rest of the season. On to Sunday's games, and we have the Roosters taking on the Warriors at Allianz Stadium. Now, over the last 10 games between these two teams, the Roosters have the better record, winning seven out of those last 10 games. However, that is seven in a row. Uh, The Roosters have not lost to the Warriors since 2018. 
A couple of injuries on either side for both teams. Uh, Brandon Smith didn't finish the game last week. We also didn't have Victor Radley and Tupo, uh, who didn't play in last week's game. They should be available for this week. But the big return is for Spencer Lenu coming back from his suspension uh, from earlier in the year, an eight-week suspension. So no doubt he will be running off the back fence to get involved in this game. Um, Although I would say that their front row stocks have been pretty good uh, in his absence. Terrell Mays had a pretty good start to the year, as well as Lindsey Collins. Um, Jarrah Hargraves also didn't play in last week's game, and he should be fit for this one. On the Warriors side of things, they've got a couple of guys out as well. Kurt Capewell has, again, picked up another injury during the game, did not finish the game. Uh, Calf injury, so... You could probably say he's going to be out for a couple of weeks. Um, uh, Calves are seemingly very common in this game, and most players miss, tend to miss about two to three weeks with those injuries. In this game, I'm telling you, the Warriors are just... Man, not the Warriors of 2023. Let me tell you, they're looking a bit tired uh, out there right now. They are also lacking some imagination and... Um, ingenuity in the red zone. Um, Sean Johnson has just gone into his shell the last couple of weeks, just won't run the ball anymore, isn't threatening the line in any way. Um, It's looking more like the Warriors of old where they fluked a couple of games here or there and they were actually a really hard team to tip, which is not great in terms of this year's uh, tipping stocks. But um, the Roosters looking very strong at the moment and I'm going to be going... Uh, The Roosters this week, I just think they continue the streak against the Warriors and get a win here, 13+. plus. The last game of round 10 is the Titans taking on my North Queensland Cowboys at Seabus Super Stadium on the Gold Coast. And over the last 10 games between these two teams, the Cowboys have the better record, winning six out of those last 10 games. They also played around about four or five weeks ago, and the Cowboys uh, just got away with a win there in the end. Um... A couple of injuries on either side. Tanner Boyd picked up a wrist injury in last week's game, so um, he's a bit 50-50 for this one. We'll have to go for scans to see if there's uh, any more damage on that one, but didn't take any further part in the game once it happened. And we should get a few players back for this week. I know Chad Townsend missed last week's game, but um, we should also get Murray Talungi back as well, which is a big in for us because our outside backs and edges are just looking terrible in terms of defense, especially the right um, right side attack for the Dolphins last week ran riot against Semi Valame and Val Holmes. Um, Jermaine Asako picked up a hat trick. And it just, as you can tell, guys, the pain in my eyes at the moment is um, unfathomable. I just can't forgive uh, the way the Cowboys are playing right now. We're just stuck in this scenario where we're letting teams score 25, 26 plus points and having to run them down. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say all the shit like we've got the attack to do it, but man, like you shouldn't even put yourself in that position. Like score the points at the start of the game, maybe put on 30 points that way you're in a commanding position and you can play a bit more conservatively. And we're just getting ourselves into a position where we're putting so much pressure on ourselves to score points. And it's you know, it's a dangerous game. Like none of it can come off or all of it can come off. And yeah, great, you win the game. But it's just not a consistent way to play football. And right now the Cowboys are a little bit lost in terms of defense. Yeah, we've had a few injuries, but it just it's not an excuse. Um the Titans, I actually think, are looking better in this game. They have, I guess, pulled together in the last few weeks. They got their win. They pushed the storm right to the end of the game. Probably were dudded towards the end of that game as well, and it should have gone into Golden Point, but that's neither here nor there. And I think the Titans look like a better pick right now, and they'll be they'll be the outsiders again. Watch that the Cowboys will be the favourites. And I actually think right now we are favourites. Let me just... Let me just check to see what what uh, what the line is here, guys. Give me one sec because I'm guaranteeing. Yeah, we're a dollar sixty favorites. I don't know how that's even possible, considering watching the two teams play, especially over the last two weeks. You would say that the Cowboys are coming last at this point in time. I'm going to go the Titans in this game. 
1 to 12. So that is it for this week's video, guys. What do you think about my tips? Let me know down in the comments section below. Please make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. We bring out so much content each and every week, and I'll catch you on the next one.